Good. So, listen, on these projects, not only do I provide the bricklaying skills or whatever you want to call it nowadays, but also the terminology. I speak to the clients about the aesthetic look, why we should be using certain bricks. Now, at the moment, we've got a wine cellar on a wine cellar, on an 1890 build. Now, look at this. The client loves the power brick, right? And he's in love with this brick. Well, these are easy made in China. Now, what happened was the Dutch had a heavy presence in China and they built almost a big city in China. So they got these bricks made, went to China and built this city. Now, we cannot put, as much as it's lovely, and I love me Chinese, right? We cannot put these China bricks in an 1870 build, our heritage, my ancestry, here in England, right? So. We're at loggerheads and I'm walking around these points and this is where it's important. You have to add your knowledge, your experience to help the client because the client's not a builder, you know, and this is where we come in. So we've gone through the kitchen. Now this kitchen on this build is probably the size of most people's house. It's one of those, it's going to be fantastic. Whiteman plan, good socialising area. Now we know the kitchen is black spec. It's one of those high tech kitchens, you know, when you blink and all the cupboards bloody open, do you know what I mean? So the wine cellar, which takes a feature part in the floor, I've got an idea. What do you think? This will be nice. Now we've got these lovely cobblestone granite sets, right? They come from up north the Tyne, the Newcastle, up the Newcastle men, by the way. 150 years old, cobble streets. They've still got the tile on them. It's lovely, and this is what I'm thinking. I'm going to show the class this. What about if we built, if you come around here and look at the bond? We done caught a bond, mix match the different sizes in lay and leave, a dark grey mortar or even a black dyed mortar in there, going down the two metres, the glass top inside. Imagine the light reflecting, showing all these contours and the stonework. And I think it would complement the kitchen. I think it would. I think I've come up with a winner. My only thing I've got, my only niche I've got, is the build is in Kent. This build wasn't done with stone, so although we're making it look old, it's not an original idea or original aesthetic structural feature they would use in the house. This is a new feature using old work, but will it work old and new? I think it will. Hello gentlemen, how are we? Right, I think this is a good part of the video for me to put this voice note over the top and make you aware of a few things. Right, 65 to 68, 8% of my jobs now are currently takeovers where I'm taking over from a previous contractor. Now this could be for a number of reasons, relationships broken down, etc. But the priority reason we're finding is simply work is not built structurally, aesthetically correct or in accordance with any professional drawing or related to UK building regulations or local building control. Now, it is what it is. We're not here slagging anyone else off. We're just doing what we do, and that is it. So on this job here, I do not authorise, permit, or advise how to do any of the work you see in the background, from lintels, insulations, uh, aesthetic, the block work structurally and aesthetically, and surroundings. So I just wanted to put that right. So we have built an episode of putting things right, and that will come up soon. So guys, listen, just bear with me, and we're going to show all the different aspects of what we went through and how we put things right and, and how we went about it, etc., etc. Listen, I hope you will enjoy the watch. God bless. Right, so what we're doing now is we're setting out this showpiece, this wine cellar, this kitchen. So as you can see, we've already done the slab and we're now going to start setting it out. Now the problem we've got, I've took over this job and I don't want to get into here or there, but the previous brick that has a building is set this extension at 120 mil out of square, right? That's not my problem, they can sort of happen. What is my problem is I can't square this off of the existing walls. No, 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 keep the camera still, sort of clear. Just let me, just always film me, yeah? Ready, start again? Yep. Yeah. Yeah? Good, right, so what we're doing now, 
is the showpiece wine set in this kitchen. Lovely little feature we're doing. So uh, can't wait to get started. But however, we've got issues. Now, I've took over this job. I don't want to get into here or there because the previous build or whatever. It's not my, my problem. I'm here just to solve problems. But the extension they've originally done is 120 mil out of square, you know. Um, drop in a comment. <laughs> I know you're going to anyway, but it is what it is. So we cannot square off the original build. So what I've had to do is, is go to the lanterns he's already put in and then keep it symmetrical to this centre pier. Now, that's important. So when the client and the family walk down, this one is in centre to the room to this pier. How the builder gets out of that square bar, packing out, I don't know, putting a bit of train track in there to build that wall out, that's up to them. But what we know is our work's going to be square. Now, how do you do this? So I've pinned two lines symmetrically off of there, kept that measurement from there, which is 12.30, and transferred that to these lines. That gives us that true line there. And in typical old school, what we've done is we've dropped a plumb ball down. So what we've done is we've dropped a plumb ball down from the width of that lantern coming in. So this plumb ball comes past this line, so we know we're dead symmetrical there, and then we're just marker. <coughs> just stop moving. Just give her a bit of stability. Yeah. So we know that that is set in a special double checker. Good. So what we know now, as a sandwich can mess up, is that is our starting corner, so we can bring our measurement now from corner to corner and then from corner to corner put another plumb line down there just to make sure and double check things are all square. So listen, it's always good to have this knowledge to get you out of jail because what do you do if things are out of square and you ain't got lasers? Is what it is. Right, a little tip right, for all you old school. Right? What I've learned off a new school is to put a pencil behind you here. Right, you get a magnet, you put the trail in, looks like you know what you're fucking doing, doesn't it, eh? <laughs> right, so we've set the marks out and I've just run a dummy course just around to show the climbing of where we go. So this will be the inside of our stonework. Now, when we set that, it is important that when you come down, the client has room to turn and manoeuvre. Kicking the wine, kicking the wine, loads of room to turn. I could quite understand what I was saying from the, from the start, but now he's coming, he's gone on a good idea, especially if he misses his camera a little bit around the old shutter. You know, I mean, it don't help, does it, eh? But, um, yeah, so plenty of movement now. We've all set out. Get this down. Really, really laid down his 8.5. <laughs> I've got a fact that the girl, is that your 8.5? Like, I've got a laid down his 8.5. <laughs>
Right. So we're cracking on, you know. Quarter bond, half bond, I've mixed it up. What I've done is literally lay and leave. I haven't tried to overthink the process. So I've just sort of put her in and then worked off the back of that one to the next quarter bond or half bond detail I'm doing. So it just free flows. Otherwise, it looks too uniform. It doesn't look true to the style, you know, the cobble set. So, I mean, tasting this round here, let's have a little look. The different heights. If you come in with a camera. Yeah, pass the camera yeah. We'll bang on level. Can you see there? Beautiful. It's yeah, so. I mean, to get that in that ballpark is good because let me just show you something just quickly. For example, you've got the different thicknesses there. Right. Ah. You can see. So what I've done is I've got the boy to load out in batches, fix small, the bats, the stitches, what I would call the closures, round and we've just picked and bumped to make it match without too many problems.
done there is because of his step holding, you can see how close it is, he didn't have enough to bank on. So we've run across the blocks around, shore this up, I'm going to put some clay mask, doing 100 mil clay mask on the back of it. So eventually it's going to be a case of getting this up so you can start getting this side back filled and then when the renders are done we'll get this tube down and then we'll have to carry on with the block work right around the back. 